Giving is a covenant practice. However, there is an extreme. And what's the extreme? When somebody tells you that if you don't give, you will not be blessed. That's not true. Because giving is not the only route through which we can materialize the blessing. We are already blessed in Christ. And there are many routes of materializing it. Giving is just one of them. There are many ways of breaking into the blessing. Number two, for somebody to tell you if you don't give, you are cursed. That's not true. Because we are blessed. And the Bible said, that which he has blessed cannot be cursed. Even when a sorcerer was hired to curse the blessed of God, he said there's no enchantment against Jacob. There's no divination against Israel. The shout of the king is in their midst. Number three, to say if you don't give your tithe or first fruit, you'll be attacked by devourers. No, that's not true. There are no devourers anywhere attacking us anymore. And we don't need God to rebuke devourers anymore. He said you are seated with Christ far above principalities and powers. Every devourer included. And he said at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. So if the devourer even comes, it's not your tithe that rebukes it. It's the authority you have in the name of Jesus. Are you following? God is not the one rebuking demons or devourers or principalities anymore. The ones that you cannot cast away. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God and wrestle them. So we are the ones wrestling principalities and we are the ones casting out demons. It's not God casting them out. Are you following this? Kenneth Hagin said he had a vision and Jesus was talking to him and a prince came and was distracting him. And he was asking Jesus, why are you not rebuking him? And Jesus said, I've given you the authority. So we, have the, we are the ones rebuking the virus now. If they are princes, wrestle them. If they are demons, cast them out. Are you following? But when you're tied... It opens to you the window of heaven. And the window of heaven is to pour you a blessing. And that blessing is the operation of the spirit. Some people tie, they still don't prosper because they don't know the window of the, the pouring out of blessing. It's the supply of the spirit. And what that comes to do is to give you strategies. is to give you inspiration. is to give you direction. So if you give tight now, it's not a guarantee that money will come. But it's a guarantee that you have inspiration. It's a guarantee that you have a strategy. Now, if you don't do anything with that inspiration, you'll be poor. That's why many titles are poor. So it's important to balance this in the New Testament context. If you give offering, it opens you to inspiration. It opens you to blessings, to access to wisdom, to strategy, to opportunity. It is your responsibility to step into that strategy, step into that inspiration. But many Christians are tithing and giving offering but they are not acting in obedience to direction, to inspiration, to strategy, to opportunities that God gives. God linked somebody to a man who could change his life once. The man said, meet me by 10. The guy went by 11.30. And said, ah, I, fall, I, I woke up late. Opportunity came, but he didn't know how to enter. Meanwhile, it may take a while for that opportunity to come again. That's why Christians are poor. So the battle is not against tithe. It's not against offering. The battle is actually against believers in action. And the battle is also against misinterpretation of doctrine. Don't tell somebody who is blessed that he will be cursed because he doesn't tithe. So what is, the, what is the meaning of the death of Christ? Don't tell somebody that a devourer will destroy his produce because he didn't tithe. What then is the place of the believer's authority? Are we not contradicting our teaching? If I'm sitting far above principalities and powers, if I'm sitting with, seated with Christ in heavenly places, if at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, why do I need a tight to do that? So what then is the implication of sitting with Christ in heavenly places? What then is the implication of the authority in the name of Jesus? This is why Christians vasculate. On one side we tell them they have authority over every demon, every prince, on another side, we come because we want to take time. We say, if they don't do this, the devil will destroy them. So the guy is now asking, is it that I'm stronger than the devil on one side and on the other side, the devil is stronger than me? It becomes a controversy. So the problem is not against these principles. It's how it is taught. And it is the inaction of believers. But listen, 
if there is one thing I can tell you about first fruit, apart from the fact that his worship, his consecration, and his honor is one of the key to increase. He say, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. All your increase. He says, so shall thy barn burst forth. So, God will give you wisdom, inspiration, strategies that will make you have so much that you, you don't have where to save it. This is why many cannot walk in the blessing of salvation. From the days of thy youth, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. It takes divine wisdom to experience the fullness of salvation.